Welcome to day 63 of Savage Cash. Here with me, Superman, your superhero cryptocurrency expert. I am absolutely roasting today. In the UK, it's about 30, 34 degrees or something. And I am just sweating buckets. And today was my son's sports day. He's 11 years old. It's his last sports day at his primary school. And I had to run the dad's race. I was pressured by my son and his friends. They go, Superman, Superman, go, go, go. And I'm like, oh, for God's sake, bloody dad's race. So I went and ran. And I got a little demeaning badge for my um, taking part. I came third. I'm not quite the athlete I once was. I was actually a proper athlete years ago, years ago. But that was when I was like a teenager. Anyway, so today I want to talk to you about this Bitcoin forking thing. And I want to give you my thoughts on what I think will happen. Okay, so Bitcoin on the 1st of August. There is um, something that's going to be run on Bitcoin called um, SegWit, which stands for Segmented Witness or something, Segregated Witness, something like that. Okay, I don't profess to be an expert on Bitcoin. I don't really touch Bitcoins. I touch altcoins. Bitcoin to me is an area I don't really touch. The only really real time I touch Bitcoin is to just buy altcoins. So I'm not going to pretend to be some expert on the subject. But anyway, um, so it's this thing called segregated witness. And um, and what happens is, is that Bitcoins, if you don't have the technical knowledge, I'm doing this, this bit really for people without technical knowledge. For people with technical knowledge, skip this bit. So um, Bitcoin basically runs a blockchain, as you're probably aware, every 15 minutes. It's like a conveyor belt of these blocks. OK, so a block comes, it fills up with about one meg of data and then it goes. In 15 minutes, another block comes, it fills up with one meg of data, then goes. And in 15 minutes and so on and so on. That's basically what happens. Now, in these blocks, it gets filled with transaction data. OK, transactions and digital signatures. And all of this takes up memory. All right. So what segregated witness is going to do is it's going to have another kind of um, app taking the digital signatures away from the blocks so that the blocks are just full of transactions. So there's going to be likely to be um, two times more transactions going into Bitcoin. OK, so it's going to allow it's going to be allowed to run more efficiently and more effectively as a result of what's called this soft fork, which is SegWit. All right. And it's going to improve the efficiency for a short while. Now, that is what's going to happen on the 1st of August, to my knowledge. And then um, they are talking about a hard fork as well. OK, so let's just imagine um, you've got these blocks getting filled. Next one, block, 15 minutes later, getting filled, next one, right? What they're thinking of doing with this hard fork is imagine this conveyor belt as like a train line, okay? So you've got this train of blocks, yeah? What they're going to do is eventually they are going to cut the train and they're going to basically redirect the carriages, okay? Think about it that way. So you've got the blocks, they're going through, and then what um, Bitcoin are going to do is they are going to create almost like a fork in the train line, and they're going to divert the carriages, other carriages, another direction. So Bitcoin is going to, so there is going to be an element of Bitcoin that just carries on doing this. It's like they've cut the train, and that train is going to carry on going. It can be mined, etc., etc. Um, but then the fork, the hard fork in the train line that has basically sent carriages in another way, that is going to make these carriages be able to carry 8 meg of data rather than 1 meg of data. So essentially it's going to improve Bitcoin tremendously. And they're saying, um, you know, at first it was kind of, do we do a soft fork, do we do a hard fork? Well, what's going to happen is, is that they're certainly, it seems, going to do a soft fork, um, which is going to have an impact, I dare say. And then they're probably going to do a hard fork as well and essentially make Bitcoin a more improved version of itself. So there's almost going to be two versions of Bitcoin running. The kind of original 
or classic Bitcoin, and then the new and improved Bitcoin, okay, which I think is going to essentially be the Bitcoin that you see on the market, okay, that you buy, and that is going to be the, the new Bitcoin is just going to stay as Bitcoin, and the old Bitcoin, well, that's probably going to stay as Bitcoin, or it's going to be, you know, called Bitcoin Classic, just like Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, when very similar happened with Ethereum, okay, the new Ethereum was just Ethereum, the old Ethereum was called Ethereum Classic. So, that is, in a nutshell, what's going to happen with this whole soft fork, hard fork thing. What's going to happen on the first regarding prices of altcoins and prices of Bitcoin? Well, I think that the market right now is very, very sensitive, okay? The cryptocurrency traders are very, very sensitive. Any, anything can bring down a market. Okay, anything right now can bring down a market. You know, a little bit of news can bring down a market completely. You know, even news of this Bitcoin SegWit thing bring, brings down a market, you know. And um, I have this feeling that whether people are worried or not, there's going to be a larger proportion of worried people about their investment than there are not worried people. So whilst I am constantly of the mindset of long-term investing, people just don't do it, okay? Similar can be said with EOS, okay? You know, I said to people, this is a coin to keep. I'm keeping it. You know, I could have cashed out at 14 times gain, but I'm keeping it. And this is how you should play it. And I say this with a lot of coins. And people just can't hold on to anything. People day trade, they go on Poloniex, they go on Bittrex all the time, and they think to themselves, oh, you know, oh, I'm, I see a little gain, it's probably going to go down, so I'm just going to dump it, okay? And so I have a feeling, given how sensitive the market has been to little price rises, I have this feeling that come the 1st of August, prices are going to go down across the board. It tends to happen anyway at the end of months. It happened at the end of May, it happened at the end of June, and it's more than likely going to happen at the end of July. No matter what, you know, is said by YouTubers like myself, no matter what is said by experts like myself, you know, it's just going, people are just going to sell because that is the sensitivity of the market. And particularly because so many new people have entered the game, newbies, you know, family, you know, people that have families, people that have their own jobs, they can't afford to just fork out, you know, 10k, 100k on a trade. They are putting their pocket money in. And when they see how, basically, how there's so many, there have been so many red days like this, when they suddenly see a green day, they just sell. And I think that based on that behavior, it's fostered this culture of not holding. It's fostered this culture of day trading, of selling as soon as there's a little rise. And I think that come the end of the month, Bitcoin is for sure going to lose some value. And the altcoins, particularly altcoins that are in the Bitcoin market, okay? Bitcoin market altcoins are going to probably be the most affected. Now, there's two ways that this could go. This could go with people investing their money from Bitcoin into Ethereum, which let's just have a look. Ethereum's on the rise. Yesterday it was at 250, now it's at 263. People moving their Bitcoin to Ethereum. So whilst one's going down, they're moving it to one that's going up. So it allows their money to increase during this little period. They're either going to move it to Ethereum or they are going to move it into stronger altcoins, okay? Altcoins that appear to be almost foolproof against um, Bitcoin rises and falls, okay? Because it happens, you know, when, when Bitcoin rises, people take their money out of altcoins and put it in Bitcoin. And when Bitcoin falls, people take their money out of Bitcoin and put it in altcoins. So, you know, that's the two ways it can go. They can either transfer it to Ethereum or transfer it to altcoins. I think these people should actually just stay holding in Bitcoin. I also think that these people um, should see the SegWit um, and the subsequent hard fork should it happen as also a good thing. Okay, they should see it as creating a more improved Bitcoin, a Bitcoin that could achieve, you know, a higher value than, you know, 2000, 2572 and going up to the kind of 5000s where people predict yeah, Bitcoin's going to go. So 
That is what I believe is going to happen. I think that the prices are going to go down, that there's going to be panic, because that's just what happens. Because people don't like change. People don't like uncertainty. They don't like going into something or investing in something where they could lose it all. And as I said, the market is so sensitive right now that people will literally sell a coin when it makes a couple of bloody cents, you know, gain. They don't wait anymore like they used to when, when, a, when a coin makes 10 times gain, like Digibyte did, make 10 times gain, then you sell. You don't bloody sell it when it makes one times gain, you know, or two times gain. You don't do that. So looking at how the market has been reacting, this is my prediction of what they're going to do. And a lot about cryptocurrency trade with trading as well as market behaviors, a lot of it is about logic and common sense. What do you think? What would you do? Think about that. Think about being a newbie. Think about being in the situation that you've got some money in Bitcoin. There's going to be some form of change. What do you do? You know, what would you do um, in this situation as a newbie? How would you be thinking? OK, I, you know, would probably be panicking if I had no knowledge. I would be thinking, right, I've got to get my money out of Bitcoin. I've got to get my money out of Bitcoin. OK, having that awareness of what people are likely to do, how they're likely to behave during these changes is a good way to anticipate what's going to happen with the values of these coins, what's going to happen to the market in general. And you should apply this constantly, this common sense and logic, see past the numbers, see past the analysis, and actually just apply common sense and logic. What do you think is likely to happen? And what I would also say right now is that EOS is on the up. So whilst we look at Poloniex and see that, you know, less than half of the table is actually green, where's a good place to put your money? Yes, where I said it was. EOS. EOS. You know, people say to me, people try and troll me in my YouTube comments and say, oh, you know, super bad. Uh, yeah, EOS, look at the market cap. It's a coin with no, you know, it's a coin with no value. It's a coin that doesn't do anything. What are you investing in? Right? EOS has Dan Larimer. Dan Larimer is the guy behind Steam, the smash hit Steam, the smash hit Ant Shares, and he has essentially used some of the code, I believe, from BitShares and enhanced it and has created EOS. This is what we have got. This is the magic we're investing in. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a strong coin. This is a powerhouse coin. This should be basically renamed powerhouse not eos powerhouse because that is what this is and also just going on yesterday's video if you want to know what um cryptocurrency ico i've invested in recently check out the cryptocurrency investment course 2017 since yesterday's video tons of people have joined you know yesterday when i did this video i had 7100 students so i've got 7600 students and a lot of them you know, have have seen this ICO, they love the sound of it. A lot of the people in my group, they look at this ICO and they think to themselves, oh my God, this sounds amazing compared to other ones. So I hope you enjoyed day 63. I hope it's given you some food for thought as to what's going to happen at the end of this month. And I'll see you in the next episode.